Chapter 2 The Monkey Bar and Grill. Mama, Abby asked as she helped dry the dinner dishes, may I go to town with you tomorrow? They have big blue notebooks at Harvey's. I have just enough of Grandma Turner's birthday money left to buy one. I suppose, Mama answered, rinsing the big cast iron skillet that she had used to fry chicken. Then, with two hands, Abby placed the heavy skillet on the stove where it would wait to fry bacon for breakfast the next morning. Ever thought about getting a new skillet? Asked Abby. This one is so old and heavy. Nope. Water swished out of the drain as Mama emptied the dishpan. New isn't always better, she said. That old skillet knows how to cook. And it fries the best chicken in the world, said Abby. She folded the dish towel and placed it on the rack. The next morning, Abby was up early. She put on her navy blue suit. Mama tied up her hair with the matching blue ribbon. I want to get to town and back before it gets too crowded, said Mama. Mama slipped on her patent leather shoes and placed a lavender hat on her head. After she picked up her gloves and purse, the two of them put on coats and hurried to catch the 915 bus. Abby and Mama sat right up in front. There was no need to go to the back of the bus any longer. It was 1960. Black people could sit wherever they wanted on public buses. But in many ways, blacks and whites were as separated as ever. Abby and Patsy still attended an all-black school. Folks couldn't get certain jobs. Nobody could live in a white neighborhood. Theaters, hotels, amusement parks, and restaurants all over town had awful signs. Whites only. All except for the Nashville Public Library. Abby and Patsy went there often. Although the day was cold, it was sunny. As the bus rolled past Tennessee State University, Abby could see the track team practicing. The bus eased its way down Jefferson Street, where the black stores were. Abby looked at the window display of the Lord and Lady dress shop. Mama had bought the suit she was wearing there last Christmas. Next, the bus moved past Odie's grocery store, where she and Patsy got dill pickles and the Cameo restaurant. It served the best chili in Tennessee. They passed the back of Fisk University's Jubilee Resident Hall and the Ritz Theater, where she and Patsy had seen the Body Snatchers movie. As the bus went by Ford's variety shop, Abby waved at Mr. Ford, who was sweeping the sidewalk in front of his store. He waved back. At 8th and Jefferson, the bus turned and Abby saw shoppers at the farmer's market. Farther away at the state capitol building sat high atop a mound. Abby held Mama's hand as they walked from the bus stop to Harvey's. Abby turned her head so she wouldn't have to see the whites-only signs in the window of High Style Hair Salon and Southland Restaurant. Abby understood why Mama never lingered downtown. She always finished her business and caught the next bus home. But today, Abby wasn't going to let anything ruin her shopping. She was going to Harvey's to get her big blue notebook.